Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video. This is your host Nino inviting you to another adventure concerning TSX32 and the Pocket 386 modern made retro computer. So, as I have explained previously, this is a modern made retro machine with a 386 compatible processor by AMD, 8 megabytes of RAM, 2 gigabyte compact flash card, and all the pleasantries of the late 80s and early 90s. The only unrealistic thing being its unusually nice screen when you compare it to machines of the time. And to the left, we are seeing a web page in webarchive.org opened concerning the TSX32 operating system by S&H Computer Systems. The site originally was named sandh.com. Here you can see it, but seems to be defunct by now. So if you go there, you will not find it and you can only find that page in webarchive.org. And anyway, TSX32 seems to have been an operating system sort of in the tradition of DEC operating systems. I mean here the Digital Equipment Corporation, which created the likes of RT11 and VMS. And it seems to have sprung up from the creator's idea to have a multi-user operating system instead of the RT11 he got when he purchased a PDP-11 a long time ago in the 70s, and then he created something called TSX+, Plus, which was pretty popular, and then he created something called TSX-32, which seems to have been less popular, though still very interesting, and I decided to put TSX-32 onto the Pocket 386, which turned out a little bit less trivial, so to say, the operating itself, system itself can be installed on the same disk as DOS. So you do not need to lose MS-DOS or your Windows installation for that matter when installing T TSX32. They can cohabit. The issue here started to be install what and how. The thing being completely obscure, there's barely any media available for it. And I found media for this in essentially like two or three places, depending on how you count. So there was, I mean, there is the main web page of it. You can't download anything from it. Looks like the disk images haven't been saved. Then there was this site called annex.retroarchive.org. And the thing in annex.retroarchive.org here is that you can find here TSX 4.11 in four zip files, A to D, right? But it is TSX Lite version 4.11. That version lacks the networking, but would still give you the vms -y feeling <laughs> that TSX 32 offers. In a neighboring directory, I found here TSX 4.2, again, TSX Lite. And these versions wouldn't work on the Pocket 386, as I subsequently found out, because apparently, that's at least my best guess at the present moment, the two gigabyte partition is simply too large for them. They're not really expecting that in 94. What else I found was, however, under marinet.com that there were versions of TSX, full-blown TSX 32, in the versions 5.3 and 6.0. So that was nice. <laughs> and I installed version 6.0, but the moment I did with a present date. The system complained that the evaluation period is over, that it will work for only 30 minutes, and so on and so forth. It wasn't nice. Installation is, by the way, quite simple. You're getting this all files.zip and then unpacking it 
in a directory on your hard disk and installing from there. So I did that, and as I outlined to you, unfortunately, the system started complaining that, yeah, that it's basically too late in the future and that it will refuse to work. <laughs> so I set my date to 2001, first, first, 2001. And then the system would not tell me these things. However, when I went, go here to TSX 32 sys, where the final installation is housed, and I start then the system by saying run TSX. However, doing so would allow me to boot, yet still tell me that I have to purchase a real license and that there is a 30 day or 50 something boots trial period and basically to torture me. <laughs> so TSX32 was working, but would be working only for a time. My first experiment was to delete this folder. Like, okay, I'm, I've had enough of TSX and I'm deleting it. And then I'm simply removing this directory entirely and reinstalling it. Will it reset the 30 days and the boots? Answer, Yes, it would. So that was a clear indicator that somewhere within this directory, tsx32.sys, there must be this file that is counting how many times did I boot it and so on and so forth. So I decided, let's find out this file, like where is it? And I did the following. I. <laughs> created a copy of this directory. I called it TSX32 backup. In fact, it still exists, right, uh, in, in, in C, in the C drive, so above it. And yeah, here you see such a directory really does exist. And here you see also disk designator, which would be much more like what the Digital Equipment Corporation would be using. So, and by the way, some of those who are looking at operating systems such as things for Atari and the like, and Risk OS and, and whatnot, some influences on their disk drive designations really do provene from there too. So having created a backup directory, I booted up, I created the backup directory, I booted up tsx32sys, issued no commands, and simply shut down the system with shut down. And having done so, the only thing that should have changed was should be the file that is recording the 30 days of 50 something boots, right? So I should be able to identify which is the file keeping track of what I'm doing and giving me thereby the opportunity to simply copy it back and thereby reset the counter. Figuring out which file that is in Linux is reasonably easy. The only thing you need to do is issue a diff command. And there we see a couple of log files, which are, you know, in all likelihood completely irrelevant. But interesting is the tsx dev.tsx file, which is shown to differ, and that indeed was the culprit. So if you have a backup of the tsx of the tsx30 of the tsx dev.tsx file, <laughs> so, so it was called, then if you re-implant that file back into the original TSX folder, you will again reset your boots as of the time this copy was created. So let's copy that over from, uh, let, let's go to TSX sys, okay, TSX32 sys, yeah, that's what it was called. And then let's copy 
from upstairs from the TSX32 backup directory, the file tsxdev.tsx, actually easy to memorize, to here. Do I want to overwrite it? Oh yes, absolutely I do. And then we say uh, run tsx. So it were 55 boots before and should now not have decreased. Yeah, <laughs> it even increased because the copy is older. So I now even have 56 boots. Now, the one thing which still remains as a bother is that if you advance the date really 30 days in the future, then this kicks in and um, <laughs> you cannot uh, you know return the date so you have to be careful with the date advancement because already if you go for the first january 2002 the system starts to complain that the evaluation period is over so there seems to be some hard-coded upper limit or something and anyway it is then suggested that you keep the date of the computer around the 1st of January 2001, which you can, of course, do by setting the date in autoexec.bat or whatever. And if you're so inclined to use the system, autoexec.bat could copy that tsxdev.tsx file and set the date. And then you basically would be having this system forever. So if you are interested in tsx32, to have it and experiment with it on your pocket 386, then that would be the way to proceed. And with that, thank you very much for having joined today. Hope to greet you here soon again. If not a subscriber yet, please consider joining our friendly community. Thank you for watching and for me, goodbye.